Hi everyone, my name is Victor Marino and I'm talk here to talk to you about the art of the movie poster. Now I'm a designer by trade, but specifically I'm really a movie buff. I've traveled to film festivals all over the US. I love revival B-movies, Z-grade horror movies. But one of the things I really love about them is the movie posters behind these films. Sal Bass's poster for Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo or John Allen's poster for Indiana Jones. These are classic posters that really draw you in with a compelling sense of visual narrative. Now I'm going to talk to you about some amazing posters. There are some not so amazing films. <laughs> the first of these is 1952's Big Jim McLean. Now this John Wayne movie, he works for the House of American Activities Committee investigating insurance fraud by communist sympathizers in Hawaii. Really exciting in the US, but in Italy, not so much. So they redubbed and retitled this film as Marijuana, the Infernal Drug. Now the Duke fights drug dealers internationally. And it's not just that poster, it's the next one. And what I really love about these posters, in besides the fact that it makes you see how Bruce Billis could be cast in a remake of them, is that they have a strong sense of action. He's a protagonist, he's active. This isn't the only case of dueling film posters I'm going to talk about. In 1936, there was a film called The Burning Question. And The Burning Question in 1936 was how are we going to keep kids off marijuana? Now, this was made by a church group in Los Angeles. They made it as a propaganda film, and it was really effective. In fact, other territories wanted this film, so they added additional reels, and they retitled this film, and the new film was called Reefer Madness. <laughs> Reefer Madness took the things that the burning question railed against and turned it on its head. It used its salaciousness to sell the movie. And this exploitation went forward in lots of ways in poster art in the 50s. For example, Bikers. This poster is for Drag Strip Riot. This poster was made before this film was ever shot. The, film, the poster was shot and was, was done by AIP. They shot the film in less than a week. They just wanted that scene of biker violence and youth in the film. Now, exploitation and women continued. Russ Meyer was a master of this. This is his great masterwork, Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. He loved having women in his movie, Strong Women. Strong Women, Violence, and Cars. And this poster gives you everything you'll see in the movie, only better. And now, Mondo is a different genre altogether. Mondo films are a pseudo-documentary. It takes elements from the third world, and it makes them, ooh, so scary and taboo. This white ingenue girl, she's about to have her mind blown by all the wonders of the South America and Africa. Now, it's also a pseudo-documentary. Survives the 1972 film. It's about a plane crash in the Andes where the survivors had to resort to cannibalism. The poster sells that because it says the survival scenes may be too intense for some. Now, Following on this trend, Italian horror films. Italian horror films in the 70s really couldn't talk about what they were about because it might be too much for some audiences. Suspiria, the poster only says the last 12 minutes are terrifying, but not as terrifying as the first 92. <laughs> Low budget pictures also have this problem. Pieces is a knockoff of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, as if you couldn't tell. The tagline tells you everything. Pieces, it's exactly what you think it is. <laughs> now, this also carried forward in action films. This is the US and the Italian poster for Escape from New York. It has a guy with an eye patch, a giant gun, and the severed head of the Statue of Liberty. The only way this film could be more awesome were if apes were somehow involved. <laughs> But this tradition of the strong hero carries forward in other John Carpenter films like Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> Big Trouble in Little China is about is a 30s detective noir mixed with comedy, mixed with Asian karate mysticism. But the really cool thing about it is it's postered by artist Drew Struzan. Drew Struzan is the definitive 80s illustrator. He did the poster for E.T., The Goonies, and Back to the Future, and these are all in colored pencil. Yes, he takes a scene from the film. He pulls you in. There's Marty McFly, he's going back in time. There's the Goonies, they're gonna fall on One-Eyed Willie's cave. And it's because they're fantasy illustrators. The brothers Hildebrandt, who did the poster for Star Wars, Renato Casaro, who did the Conan poster, and Frank Frazetta, who did the poster for Gauntlet, all came from a pulp novel tradition where they used the King of the Mountain pose, hero weapon, girl at the side. It was really popular, so popular that Boris Vallejo, another artist, took these same themes for parody. But even though they parodied the posters, the poster them still, the posters still reek of awesomeness. <laughs> Hail to the king, baby! Now, even 
no Photoshop and floating heads are taking over our movie posters. Some directors still think that they're awesome with some illustration. Frank Darabont is a great, great director who has Drew Suzanne do all of his posters. In fact, the protagonist of The Mist, which Drew Suzanne did the poster for, is a movie poster illustrator. Now, if you found anything I said kind of interesting, you know, look up these websites, IMP Awards, PosterWire.com, or Tony Norman, who did these great anthology on these posters. Now, you can find me online at VictorMarino.com or on Twitter at Victor Marino. Thank you!